Hello everyone, I'm Joelle Rabo Miletus and I'm a licensed clinical psychotherapist. And just a reminder for today, although I'm a licensed therapist, nothing that we discuss is to be taken as medical advice. So if you have any questions or concerns, please go see a licensed professional in your area. Welcome everyone to our Therapy Talks session mini-series. Today I'm talking with Shelby about her anxiety and the ways that she can manage this in her day-to-day -day life. Over the next few weeks, Shelby and I will be exploring how she can use therapy to improve and live her best life every day. We start off by getting to know Shelby and how anxiety and stress shows up in her life. Today we explore thought-stopping techniques to combat negative core beliefs. Hi Shelby, thanks for coming in today. Thanks. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. So um, I appreciate, I know we spent a little bit of time just kind of going through our regular assessments. So I have a little bit of an idea of what you wanted to start therapy for and really what your therapeutic goals were, but it would be helpful if you wouldn't mind sort of recapping maybe the top three or the top five therapy goals, and then we can you know, track that throughout our sessions together. How does that sound? That sounds great. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so I always like to write things down. I'm very like list person. So I'll just go through my list. Perfect. Um, so definitely some anxiety issues. Um, I'm like a constant overthinker and I'm constantly worrying about things. Um, a lot of fear around like death, the death of loved ones and my own death too. So um, lots of anxiety there. Also a little bit of jealousy issues and like abandonment comparison, kind of like self-worth and self-esteem issues. Um, I find, I talked about this last time too, I find sometimes I'm not like a yeller or like I don't scream or anything like that, but I tend to be a little bit like, a little bit like, I don't know, like whiny or like a little bit you know, kind of like young sounding when I'm upset. Um, I'm quite emotional, so I'm okay. I cry quite a bit. I'm, I'm okay with it. But yeah, if I can talk a little bit more like, you know, rational, I think is a good word. I think I, I often come at things with from an emotional standpoint. So if I could be a little bit more rational in conversation, that would be nice. <laughs> Okay. Um, and yeah, just being a little bit easier on myself. I've definitely been getting better at it because I had been doing therapy for eight months. Um, so I've noticed a huge improvement. So I just want to continue improving on the self-compassion piece of it. Got it. Okay, great. And I just, I'm going to do my best to repeat back, uh, what I heard you say, and then we can sort of pick a place that you want to start, or if there was something, you know, in your notes today of what you wanted to talk about or what you were thinking about talking about. So um, we talked about the worrying and the anxiety around worrying and some of that shows up with the fear of people dying or or your own death and sort of that ongoing what I hear you say is that anxious voice that comes up a lot. And so sometimes that'll result in you feeling young or talking more childlike than you'd like. And so it sounds like that might inter interfere with some of your relationships, both maybe friends, family, and romantic relationship. And then um, also you were talking ab about, Amit, hold on, give me a second. <laughs> it's okay. Um, the last one, you, could we remind me? Yeah. Would, yeah. There I, was like some, um, jealousy and, um, like self-worth issues comparison. Okay, great. And then the last thing that you mentioned Shelby was the comparison component. Again, that sounds like a lot of worry, anxiety, negative self-talk, and maybe that's showing up as jealousy. Do, do you feel like I got mm -hmm. everything and, and I'm understanding it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, what would be a good place for us to start today? Um, so I kind of keep track during the week, kind of things that have come up, situations where um, I would like kind of your input and like help to kind of get through the stage I'm at. So I can just give you like an example of that's happened this week. And then we can kind of maybe work on that. And I can ask you some questions if that's okay. Sure. That sounds great. 
Okay, perfect. So, um, so a situation that happened um, yesterday, we went climbing, we went um, camping for the long weekend, and it was a really good trip. We went with some friends. And I don't know why, but um, with certain things, I get very like hard on myself. And I think because my partner's really good at climbing, sometimes I feel like I need to like measure up to that. Or I feel like maybe that's like what he wants. And he's always like reassuring me that like, it doesn't matter my skill level. Like he loves me despite that, but I just like keep comparing myself to people who are better than me, or I don't know, just like putting myself down. Right. So I'm now at the part where if I'm on the wall and I'm not doing very well, I can hear my thoughts. Whereas before I think they just used to like run wild. I can now hear them and I can now like be aware and listen to them. And the biggest thing I've been noticing is I keep saying like, why can't I do this? Like, why can't I like get past this first section? Why can't I do this? And then I'm now also at the part where I'm able to be like, okay, it's okay. Like you actually can do this, but maybe you're tired. You know, maybe it just rained and the wall's a little bit wet. So it makes it a little bit harder. Um, maybe like you're on your period, you know, like, so yeah. I'm able to now counter those thoughts, but I literally just started like crying on the wall <laughs> and my partner was super good about it. He was like, it's okay. Like, do you want to come down? Do you want to take a break? And he reminded me too, that like you climbed a lot yesterday, like you're tired. Um, so I'm just like, not sure what the next step is and is crying on a reasonable, like action to do at that time? Because like, there's all, all our friends are there, you know, and my sure. other friends trying to like crack a joke and stuff. And I'm barely answering. And I told him after I said, I'm so sorry. Like I was crying so I can respond to you properly. And he's like, Oh, I didn't even notice. So, you know, like I try to like make light of it because I, everyone knows I'm very emotional and like, I cry quite a bit, but is that like a reasonable way to respond to how I was feeling is crying? Yeah. You know, it's, it's such, it's such a good question. And I think the forgive the therapist answer, right. Um, do you feel like it's reasonable? In other words, when you cry, are you embarrassed, right? Or do you just say, you know, that's just who I am. I don't mind that part of me. Uh, I, you know, that's how I show my emotion. So really it comes back to how do you feel when you start crying as, as an emotional response to stress, right? Or anxiety? Okay. Okay. Good question. Well, I'm definitely embarrassed, but okay. not to the point, like, I don't know. Like, yes, it's a little bit embarrassing, but I'm also very open with my emotions. So it's not like the end of the world to me, but I feel like even physically my throat starts hurting so bad when I cry. So because of that pain, I actually have to like stop crying just to stop the pain of my throat hurting. I don't know if that's like a normal reaction when people cry is that their throat hurt, but that's what happens to me. So I think the frequency that I cry could be a little bit like the gap could be a little bit smaller um, or just like, yeah, I think that I could work on the response for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, probably. so sometimes backing into this, right. So, so it sounds like there may be a little bit of perfectionism or imposter syndrome. Like, you know, I actually know how to do it, but I don't think I know how to do it. Do either of those resonate for you? Yeah, it's because too, when you had, you've done something before, right? Because I had done this years ago, like three years ago. So I, yes, had in my mind, like I set myself up for um, this thing, like, oh, I know I can do it. So I think I let myself down and then people were watching and then I felt embarrassed that I couldn't do it and all of that. Right. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So a lot of, so a lot of anxiety and negative self-talk, right? So not so much anxiety about being nervous around the climbing, but anxiety around performance, like being able to do it well, right? Or not being judged maybe about, you know, mm -hmm. how, how good of a climber you are. Does that feel like that was part of the narrative that was going on? Yeah, for sure. And it's funny because okay. like, I don't, it's not even like I'm, I'm not super strong or anything. Like I literally just do it for fun. So I don't know why I put such a strong, like performance, you know, in my mind, I just like, actually just want to do it to move my body and, and just for fun. So I don't know where this, this comes from. Yeah. So some of it is probably, you know, just not wanting to look foolish, you know, maybe there's some competitiveness, you know, I know you're an athlete already. And so there's always that pressure to be able to perform. 
especially when you're with friends, right, or people are watching. So I'm wondering if some of the thought stopping techniques, that's this cognitive behavioral thought or CBT. And so, you know, it sounds like you've gotten like, like the first part of that, which is, oh, okay, I recognize the voice now. And, and it's like, oh, okay, I hear kind of that, that inner monologue where maybe before you weren't picking up on, on that. So that's a huge first step and that's really hard work. So great job with that first Thank piece you. of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sometimes that's the hardest part of trying to, I, you know, isolate and identify, okay, whose voice is that? So some of the questions that you can ask yourself when you're not in the moment, so this would be some good journaling prompts, is when you hear that, if you go back to that scenario with you climbing, like whose voice is that? Is it mine? Is it mine at a certain age? Like, do I sound like I'm 16? Do I sound like I'm 22? Is it a parent? Is it a coach? Right? Is it my, you know, my partner, my friends? And so sometimes identifying whose voice that is, and it's usually an authority figure, right? Could be a professor, um, but it's it's that finger pointing like, oh, Shelby, you should be able to, kind of a tone. Does that does that feel like I'm kind of getting the the feel of what was happening in that moment? Yeah, well, I, like at this moment, I can't pinpoint whose voice that was because it, mm-hmm. like in my head, it sounds like mine, but yeah. I really like this perspective. And next time I'm going to try to pay attention. Like, is this like, yeah, like you said, like a teacher's voice or a coach's voice or like whose voice is this? So, right. So, so exactly. So if you can reflect back and, and do a little thinking back to it and some journaling on it. Cool. If, if not, no big deal. Right. The next time you notice that you're kind of in that shoulda, woulda, coulda voice um just checking in so whose voice is it and if it's mine then how old do i feel right now because a lot of times people will say you know it's my voice but i feel like i'm 15 or i feel like you know when i you know failed at blah 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 right and so you're almost transported back in time and so when you can identify what those two things are it becomes much easier to tackle and and so the thought stopping piece is visualizing a stop sign right um or telling yourself to stop and so for me visualization is really hard and so a lot of times i use a a different kind of inner monologue of just saying to myself okay you know joe stop just stop talking take a breath and so we want to do both of those things so the intellectual component or the skills-based piece is that stop and the breath resets the anxiety. So that's sort of that sore throat you're talking about, or if you notice that your heart's racing, it's, you know, you're, you find you're hyperventilating a little bit, maybe your palms are getting sweaty, um, you feel a little shaky, you start crying. So the, all of that is your fight, flight, freeze starting to go into overdrive. And basically it's, it's there to protect you. So it's going danger, 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 Shelby, stop, 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 right? And so, then the waterworks for you. That's how that's manifesting. Make sense? Yeah. So what is it trying to protect me from? Like yeah. from being embarrassed or from like, what's it? Yeah. It's so subconscious and it's not rational. And so that's what makes it difficult, right? If it, if it were rational, you'd be like, oh, okay. I, you know, A plus B equals C. I know how to deal with this, but because it's not rational and it's not conscious, Part of it is is a chemical component. So when you're stressed out, your body floods with about 30 different stress hormones. And so that fight, flight, freeze activates, and it's not always a conscious thought. And sometimes people will sit, will be able to identify, oh, I had this thought, and then I had these physical reactions. Other people will say I had a physical reaction, and then I had that thought of fear. And my guess is for you, it's actually a similar mechanism when you physically have it, then that's that sort of, I'm afraid somebody's going to die or I might die. So it sounds like it's, it's a similar thing happening, right? It's just two different presentations of it. So back to that skill, saying stop and visualizing a stop sign if you can, and then taking a really big belly breath. You want to breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. And that will start to reset that chemical response. So it's going to be this three-step process. So first visualization, second breath, and then the third part is what do you need to do next? 
So you want to make sure you're asking a what question or a how question, not why. Anytime you go, okay, why am I feeling this? Why am I experiencing this? You're back in that spinning again. So we want to actually stop that anxiety from spinning. And so we want to ask ourselves, okay, what? So stop, take a breath. Okay, what do I need to do? Well, right now I just need to get down. I need to get down from, from the wall. Can I do that? Yes, I can. Do I know how? I do know how. Okay, maybe I'm going to go slow, but I can get down. So you notice how I'm starting to reframe the anxiety, right? Mm, okay. Into a solution, basically. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the why part is if it feels safe to you or later on, I know you like to write things down in journal. So, you know, at that point, that would be a really good journal prompt of why, why did I get anxious or why did I feel like I couldn't do it or, you know, what was so bad about it or made me feel so bad that I started crying. Like those would be really good journal prompts and then bringing that into session next week and then we can go, oh, okay, let's see if we can kind of tease this out a little bit more as far as why is it happening. Mm, okay, because I, I see. So I try to figure out why when I'm in this scenario, but I think that might be a little bit overwhelming for me because I'm already like flooded with emotions that trying to figure out why is just like, I just, like you said, I think I prefer focusing on the solution. Like you're saying, I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. And so okay. that hopefully if it works, will stop that, that anxiety or that flooding that's happening. And that's the flooding part is why you're going right into crying, you know, and, and it's, it's almost, again, it's a coping mechanism and a release. Um, and so sometimes that response doesn't actually match what you're really feeling. You know, it's, I think it sounds like it's more of an, you're just overwhelmed. And so your body just naturally releases that way. And so when it's habitual like that, it takes a little time to rewrite the script because you're basically, you're, you're having to retrain your brain how to respond the way that you want it to. Um, and, and when you have that thought stopping, it gives you sort of that extra beat or two makes sense before you start being flooded where you're you're cycling through it or we call it ruminating you're going around and around and around with it okay okay i like that i'm gonna try that i think too what i've learned to like even from that single experience was um setting myself up a little bit better so that day i was really tired we slept in a tent the ground was super hard we didn't have anything underneath yeah. us so i was up every hour like i did not sleep good so yeah. that day i did my first time and i felt good but i didn't want to climb anymore that day but still i hopped on the wall and i think i need to be more strict with myself and say if you're not feeling it that's okay and you can just hang out take photos like do other things like you don't have to force yourself to do something you don't want to do right yeah and i think i just need to uh remember that and just like yeah be more strict with myself on that um because going into something saying i don't want to do this obviously that's not going to probably be that enjoyable of an experience right so yeah just setting myself up a little bit more and another thing i thought of too was um um uh Oh yeah. If I can't emotion, if I don't feel emotionally like strong enough that day to deal with the fear, whether it be like the fear of heights or the feel of failure, I feel like I should just do something a little bit easier that day or just do a little bit less or sometimes not at all, you know, and just like giving myself um, that freedom to be like, okay, I don't feel like emotionally good right now. So I'm good. I'm just going to do something that kind of pumps me up a little bit. That makes me feel good. Right. Yeah. Something, something a little bit easier, maybe. Yeah. And they're all great. They're all great solutions. And so my question for you is what happens when you sort of override that? You know, so why? So we're going to ask why questions in therapy, because that way we can kind of get to the root of the, you know, hopefully the heart of the matter. So, you know, why do you think you jumped on the wall, even though you're like, I'm tired and and I don't know, maybe I'm I should be done but I don't, I don't want to be embarrassed. I, I don't want to disappoint my partner, my friends. Like, what do you think was going on for you? 
exactly what you said the second one like it's always I don't want to like let people down I don't want to disappoint them we came all this way and I feel like they're going to judge me if I'm not climbing too because they're all climbing so I think yeah I'm just like scared of being judged I think so where like when you hear yourself saying that where do you think that's coming from maybe a comparison like I'm comparing or I don't feel good enough. Like I, I'm comparing myself to other people who are climbing a lot that day. Um, and yeah, maybe I don't feel good enough. Is there any other things that maybe you think? I don't know if those, are, I mean, so that, okay, I don't feel good enough. That's that perfectionism, right? I don't wanna let people down, that people pleasing. You know, like it's all interconnected, right? Um, I don't wanna feel like a failure. Does that sound like that resonates? Mm-hmm. Like I don't wanna feel judged, like, I don't want people to think, I don't know, bad of me. <laughs> okay, so so if they were to judge you, then what would that say about you? What would that sound like or what would that say about, okay, what would that say about me? Yeah. Um, it would say that maybe I'm lazy. Okay, what else? Or- <laughs> Give me the laundry list. Okay, so I'm lazy, what else? I'm... Um- I'm not, I'm not good. I, maybe I'm not athletic. Um, okay. Keep going. Um, why did I come here in the first place? Okay. You're, yeah. <laughs> are you, are you kind of like a drag or, or just no fun to be around? Would that- oh, maybe, maybe not the first one, but okay. it could be one. Okay. Um, you talked about, you know, that jealousy piece. So, um, they can all do it. I can't, they're better at it than me. So what else? Give me all of those. If, if I didn't do it, if I didn't climb, then it would say, what about me? Okay. So I have this (laughs) big fear that my partner wants someone wants to date someone who's a really strong climber. Okay. And so that is big because every time I don't want to hop on the wall, if I'm just not feeling that day, I kind of force myself to just so I can like impress him or something so that I can be this, like, like not like someone who climbs for him or something, you know? Okay. So then if I don't, if I don't climb or I don't climb well, then he'll leave me. Yeah, at the end, like, yes, at the very end of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if I don't climb well, then I'm unlovable. I'm not worthy of being loved. Or maybe I'm not his type is Ah. a good way to say it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And so if I'm not his type, then what does that mean? Like, I guess he's going to leave me. Yeah. Yeah. So, and if he leaves me, then what does that say about me? I'm what? I'm alone. <laughs> I'm alone. I'm, I'm unlovable, right? Mm-hmm. Does that, does that feel like that hits? I'm alone and I'm unlovable. Yeah. Yeah. So we call that a core belief. And that shows up in really early childhood. We, we all have these core beliefs. Again, it's not rational, but that's where that, notice how much emotion is coming up, right? Because it, it's a believed, it's emotionally felt, right? Physically felt, and we believe it. Um, so what's true about that? statement if i'm not a good climber then i'm unlovable i don't think it's true yeah (laughs) so i say this with like without judgment and with love right that you're truly an empath and what i mean by that is that you feel it all right physically feel it you emotionally feel it psychically you know it it's not logical right and then it all happens at once And so I think part of why it feels like it's hard to control is because you're, you're feeling it at all these different levels. Right. So I don't know if that resonates or if I understand correctly. Oh yeah. I definitely feel like 
I'm very observant and I just like feel people's emotions really strongly and I don't really know how to like disassociate myself from other people's emotions like I would never want to fully like I like being caring but where it doesn't impact my day or where I don't like if I see someone else cry oh I'm crying for sure you know or if right. someone else is in a bad mood instantly like my mood is affected so I don't really know how to like separate the two yeah so let, let's I, I think that's that's a really important kind of just aha about yourself we should definitely come back to i, I want to go back a little bit even though it's super painful to these core beliefs right that if then because i think that that's part of what's coming up with the you know pushing yourself i need to do it i need to be good at it right i can't give myself a break um you know because it doesn't sound like you're saying I'm undeserving of a break. It's more about if if I don't do this, then um, the person that I love the most, right, isn't going to love me and they're gonna leave and I'm unlovable. It sounds like that's really what that core belief is about, that abandonment. Mm -hmm. Does that yeah, happen, yeah. Happen, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So so let's go through those like that if then is the way to sort of tackle figuring that part out and so then what we want to do is start to track that so anytime you kind of get that same hit of like um if i don't do this then i'm not going to be good enough or if i if i don't climb and i give myself a break then i'm going to make him upset even though rationally it doesn't make any sense right like if this were logical we wouldn't be having the conversation you know what i mean yeah yeah because sitting here now i'm like this makes no sense <laughs> Yeah, but emotionally, not, yeah. It, but emotionally, you feel it right now, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, where, it, it's so, like I'm scared. Okay, so tell me more about what you're feeling right now when you think about that. Um, when I think like him abandoning me or leaving. Yeah, that if you know, if I don't do this, if I don't climb, then he's not gonna love me, and he'll leave. Um, I'm scared. Okay. um where do i feel it like like physically? in your body yeah um well my stomach i feel like i hold anxiety a lot in my stomach i was telling you that last time too i have a lot of stomach issues um and so every time i'm anxious i like my stomach starts hurting like it starts getting like a little bit crappy um and then well i feel it in my eyes because i'm crying <laughs> mostly yeah. crying about it so i feel it there maybe like like again in my throat a lot okay and then you, i start to get a little bit like sweaty okay so stomach crampy like do you feel like you have sort of an acid reflux kind of response or stomach crampy where it's more gi issues where you're nauseous or mm -hmm. yeah more not not that much um heartburn unless i like eat something that gives me the heartburn but it's more like cramping and um yeah like kind of uh, sometimes my stomach will like shake even i feel like kind of shaking okay um mm -hmm. so what in in the past has sort of calmed that down for you have you noticed anything that you do um breathing definitely helps and i'll try to like focus on the area that hurts so if it's like a specific part of my stomach, I'll focus on that part and I'll just breathe through it. Um, and then also self-massaging is really helpful or like going to do something that takes my mind off of it. But the number one for me is always talking. Like I just always yeah. need to talk to get my emotions and my feelings and my ideas out. And actually, even if I don't get the chance to talk, say um, something happened and you know he has to go to work or even if it's with a friend and they just like can't chat at this moment and there's like some like anxiety between us i go into like a straight panic mode i just like i can't just go the whole day without chatting about it i need to chat about it now you know i'm very like now i need to do it got it so okay, not so not the, not the best at self-soothing i'd say okay good word yeah really good word so right now scale zero to ten zero like not feeling it at all and ten it's like i need to go to the emergency room at the hospital what number would you give it 
with stomach pain specifically or like anxiety specifically or fear just of him in leaving? this in yeah in this moment as we're talking about it right you know because you know a few minutes ago there was a lot of tears where you're like this this really is hurting me you know so how how bad is it zero not at all 10 really really bad like a four i feel like i'm in like a safe environment right now so i okay. and like i don't feel like I, i'm very like sweaty like i was saying and like a little bit anxious just like chatting about this in general um but like i feel i feel okay like i feel like okay. I, I like working through it okay so so talking working through it finding solutions you said earlier that was super helpful right so why don't you just take a couple of like really big deep belly breaths like in through your nose and out through your mouth and really slow down so in through your nose and out through your mouth Good. I was actually proud of myself too because I was able to do this on the wall like yesterday when I was panicking I just like closed my eyes I said I don't care who's watching right now I'm just gonna take three deep breaths before I continue this good excellent and did you notice that you started to come come down from the panic a little bit yeah it, de it, de it definitely helped just to be able to focus on my breath and that's not to say the thoughts didn't return like they definitely returned but at least physically I felt a little bit calmer good okay and, and i'm hoping that breath work is going to start to ease some of the stomach cramping and that that sore throat that you're describing so some of the breath will will slow that biochemistry down a little bit and so sort of return you back to that homeostasis or bal or that balance your baseline okay. um yeah and so that that's really what we're after and so he, you know here's the thing with all of these skills we've talked about today and i'll i promise i'll recap them at the end for you um is they work great in the moment and then 30 seconds later you're right back in it again and then it works great and then you know 30 seconds later you're right back. like the problem is is it's not a one and done it doesn't work and you're like oh cool done i feel better problem solved right and and part of it is this is your coping mechanism and it's and again it's a way that you keep yourself safe even though it doesn't seem rational or logical you've probably been doing some version of this since you were a little kid um and ways to keep your to keep yourself safe and keep yourself moving forward and and continuing to to do it anyway or to engage or to disengage when it's not safe so now we're trying to like okay now you're grown up and we've got to rewrite you know this defense mechanism that really actually works very well for you. It keeps you out of having a full-blown panic attack. So we don't wanna just say, okay, let's get rid of it because it works really well. What we wanna do is think about it as a light switch where you can kind of turn it down when you don't need it, right? And so on the wall, you really started, like you, you you're like, it's almost like over 50% of the way there, you're so close to like getting the skills. And so that deep breathing, you know, thought stopping, okay, I'm identifying the thoughts, I need to calm down, I need to just get down, everything's going to be okay, kind of that processing out loud, you know, is is a huge piece of it, like you were half half of the way, I think, if you can implement the thought stopping and really start, we can start to identify those core beliefs and why it's coming up for you, um, then you'll really be able to take it to that next level and start controlling more of the crying component. And, and it's almost like pushing the reset button. You'll be able to do it quicker. So the trick is that okay. if it doesn't work, do it again. <laughs> right. And, and just keep, keep at it and keep, keep trying it and what i'm after for us between our sessions is that next time you're like hey joe it worked really well and then i forgot about it which is 99 percent of the people i talk to when they're first learning the skill they come in and they're like it makes perfect sense yes i can do this and then they're like really good for 24 hours and then they forget <laughs> right because it's a skill and so mm -hmm. it's something where you have to really keep and i shouldn't say you have to um it's it's keeping on it and so like if you could actually see my computer i have you know sticky notes all over 
my screen. And so a lot of it are, are these cue reminders, stop. I have one that says, wait, why am I talking, right? That acronym. So it's like, wait, why am I talking? Take a breath you know, recenter. Okay, now re-engage. So sometimes writing those cues out for you um, and just putting it on your computer, putting it on your bathroom mirror, so you are looking at it and it helps refresh, right? That sometimes okay. works too. You know what I used to do? <laughs> I used to yeah. add myself as a contact and send myself texts throughout yeah. the day. Perfect. I used to be like, you're doing great, like keep it up and just like send myself texts. Yeah and did okay. it but did it work yeah it was actually kind of yeah. nice i don't know I, I guess i stopped doing it but maybe i'll try it again yeah or just yeah. reminders you know like like hey that that meeting was really hard or hey you know um i'm feeling super anxious because he's going to be late from work and it it makes me nervous right whatever it is you know those little mm -hmm. reminders of um Maybe, and like you said, talking it out helps. So maybe just typing yourself a text of like, hey, I'm feeling mm -hmm. really anxious. I don't know what I'm worrying about. Like, I just talked to him. It's going to take him, you know, I'm making, I'm making up a story, right? It's going to take an hour yeah. for him to get home. Uh, and, and just typing that out to yourself. Because like you said, that okay. talking piece is really important for your processing. So mm -hmm. I wonder okay, if that okay. might help. Yeah, I think too. Um, I'm gonna, I like that idea. I'm going to try to and maybe even talking to my dog, you know, like uh, him, like listening might help too, because it might feel like I'm actually talking to someone. Yeah. Um, like speaking it out loud, maybe it's helpful for me rather than just writing it down too. like, maybe that's a good add on. And I just want to I just want to check with you. Do you think it's um, something like this? Because I thought about this yesterday, too. So um, I'm really afraid of heights. Okay. And the more I think about it, the more it's like, it's not really no natural for us to be in the air. Like, you know, we're not birds, like we're, we walk on land, but the thing is like, it is a safe sport. So I kind of see the same situation I'm going through emotionally, um, mentally as well with the fear of heights. And I'm wondering this whole like retraining of your brain to tell yourself that it is a safe environment that you're in. Is that kind of like what you're describing with, hey, you are emotionally safe right now. You don't have to be like afraid of people judging you or him leaving, et cetera. Is that like the same kind of thing going on? Yeah, yeah. And and it's interesting, right? You're afraid of heights and yet you climb. I hear this from a lot of people, um, especially with, with the, the clients that I work with. Um, and so, you know, part of that too is developing a checklist to help with the anxiety, right? Okay, do I have all of my equipment? Is it in good working order? Do I have everything I need? Did I forget anything? Um, you know, um, is there anything broken, right? Have I okay. gone through all of my safety, you know, regulations? Is there anything that I'm missing? Do I need somebody else to check my gear, right? So sometimes, I'm, and again, I'm making stuff up, but going through and creating- No, that's not a good. <laughs> Yeah, to, to create a checklist for yourself, right? So then before you start climbing, you go through your checklist. Like, okay, have I done all of these things? Yes, cool, you start. And if it's like, oh, no, I'm not sure. Okay, then recheck, right? So you kind of have, okay. you build in this checklist to help ease your anxiety. I'd say, you know, go back to that breath work, take a couple of deep breaths, you know, maybe roll, you know, roll your shoulders, roll your head get yourself center, and then you go into the climb, right? And so same okay. thing on the descent, where if you notice the, the anxiety or that, that fear is coming up, you go through your checklist. Is everything in working order? Yes, I already checked, right? Did somebody check my gear? Yes, somebody already checked my gear. Did I safely get up here okay? I safely got, in, right? So you notice how I'm starting to go through and calm myself down, right? And mm -hmm. there's nothing that I've forgotten because you've already caught that at the beginning. And then you can, st and then you start repelling and then practice that breathing. And when you notice the anxiety coming up again, go back to those big, deep belly breaths, right? And see if you can mm -hmm. keep it in what we call somatic or in your body and not so much in your head. Because what it sounds like is you're getting wrapped in the, the, 
the fear and the, the anxiety, the intellectualization of it. And so you're kind of rolling in your thoughts. Does that make sense? It's almost yeah, like yeah, like I'm constantly, on a wheel. Yeah, I'm constantly thinking of like the what ifs. Like, yeah. you know, I don't know, what if the rope breaks? <laughs> like, what if this happens? Because I think hearing stories about, and this is with anything with me, like um, if I hear stories about um, car accidents or right. like climbing incidents, or if you're biking and something happened, I think those stories are for me, like, yes, they help keep you safe because now you're making sure more, but at the same time, they're really like hurting me because I'm constantly worried about my entire surroundings everywhere I go. Cause I'm like, Oh, I heard a story last week and this happened downtown. Now I'm scared to go downtown. Oh, I heard a story here on this uh, car accident. Now I'm scared to drive, you know? So I need to start maybe listening to things that are a little bit more positive. That and, and, and unplugging. So if it's, if somebody, if it's a story that somebody's telling you, um, I, I am not a fan of true crime and horror story, like horror, mo like that just scares the garbage out of me. And so, um, you know, I have in the past said, you know, like to my, to my people of like, okay, stop, like, I can't hear it anymore. And they laugh, but, but it's true. Like the only thing I can do to just disconnect from the anxiety or the fear that starts to well up is to have just like, please stop talking. Um, and they laugh because I'm ridiculous. They think it's funny. And, and so, but it works for me, right? So some of it is knowing when you're starting to get those cues of like, this is moving into making me anxious. It's no longer helpful. Can you unplug if it's something you're listening to or can you politely excuse yourself from the conversation? You know, or again, if it's mm -hmm. if it's somebody that you feel comfortable with or close to, can you go? No, I don't want to hear anymore. It's making me anxious, right? Um, so, sort of limiting your exposure might help. And then I mm -hmm. think like trying to apply all of the other skills we talked about today, because a lot of this it works for all these different areas. And so we're sort of just cherry picking right now. Hey, let's apply it to this one scenario but it actually works for everything. And so it's the same thing with driving, right? You know, are there air, is there air in the tires? Is the check engine light on? It, you know, did I have the oil check? You, you kind of go through, you know, do I drive safely? Do I have my seatbelt on? Am I following the speed limits? You know, all of those things, you create these checklists. Um, and then when you notice you're feeling anxious, you, you can come back to that, what we call reference point of like, okay, I checked this. Right. Mm. So it, and okay. it's not that it isn't a possibility because then now you're out of reality. Right. Because there are all sorts of things that are possible. Right. Or or probable doesn't mean it's actually going to happen. OK. OK. I think, too, when you mentioned the driving thing, um, sometimes when I've been driving, uh, I get bored, so I start to overthink things. So I, I bring myself back to my breath, but I've also been focusing on like my hands on the steering wheel or like my feet on the ground. Um, so kind of like feeling and like what I smell or things like that. And so I just thought maybe I can bring that um, to the wall or into like other scenarios. Like maybe when I'm climbing, instead of thinking, I'm gonna die right now, I could instead think like, oh, what does the rock feel like on my fingers? Like, you know, right. um, like things like that and get in more a little bit more like into the experience rather than in my head making up stories yeah, absolutely so exactly and and it's a you know we call it the five senses or the five four three two one right grounding exercise but that that's exactly what you're talking about so when you're in your head getting into your body what do you smell what do you see what do you feel is it hot or cold um you know, what colors are you noticing, you know, um, and you really start looking at environmental input and f and physical or, or sensation, right? My um, taste, touch, sound, right? That kind of a thing. Yeah. And so you're really tapping into that when you're in your head. When you're in your body and you're like, my stomach hurts, I'm gonna cry, my throat hurts, like I feel this cramping happening or this shaking, we want to move you into your head and make it intellectual, which is why I'm I'm going back mm -hmm. to that thought stopping of like, okay, stop, take a breath, what's next? 
So notice how I'm actually getting away from the body response, right? So we okay. call it titrating. When you're in your head, you move to your body. When you're in your body, you move to your head. Make sense? Yeah, like a balance. But... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. and the breathing and keeping that breathing. So, um, you know, we, we talked a lot, you know, from, from where we started and you outlining, you know, the five things that you really want to look at while we're doing sessions together. You know, today's just sort of an overview of all of these little different things that that you talked about from more of a 40,000 foot level of, hey, here's these different experiences. There's They're thematic if you think about just the anxiety and how that shows up for you and all of the different areas that you outlined. Um, mm -hmm. And so right now, today, we're really just focusing on, okay, what are some skills that might help sort of decrease the amount of anxiety that you emotionally feel, right, or intellectually feel, and then also physically feel. So we're, we're you know, looking at it from two different angles. And so we talked about a, a couple of different skills that we're using. And then what I'd like you to do is try it. If it works, super cool, keep doing it. And um, I know you like to journal and write notes, so keep a log, like, hey, this worked. If it doesn't work, cool. You're not hurting my feelings. Like here, here's the most important thing is there are a million therapy techniques and, a, and, and most of them are really good. And so right now I, we're using a multi-modality approach. So we're picking and choosing from different theories to see what's actually gonna work for you. So if it doesn't work, it just means we have the wrong theory. And so you're not hurting my feelings. And that's super helpful for me to know to come in and go, hey, I tried this thing and it wasn't helpful. So, okay cool then we can kind of dissect that and figure out okay why didn't it work and then what what do we think would be a better choice um what i'm looking for in the therapy process is what we call resistance when you're like nope uh, -uh i'm not doing it <laughs> and then i'm like oh okay there's something there right so yeah. You didn't have any resistance that came up that I noticed in this session, right? It's either like, oh, yes, that resonates or, oh, no, that's not what really the issue is for me, which is super helpful to have that guide. Um, so I know, you know, how to direct our, our time together. How does that sound? Perfect. Yeah. No, I'm really excited to try these new techniques. Like, they all sound very helpful for me. Cool. So just... To quickly recap, we had um, the, the thought stopping, that was that stop sign, right? Taking a breath and then what's next and staying either in what or how, moving into solution and not why. We had why for journaling. So when you go back, identifying, you know, why do I think that happened? Whose voice that was or how old do I feel are all really good prompts for, for your journaling and trying to, to keep pulling that apart. The third thing we talked about was identifying core beliefs. And we did that through if then statements. You know, if I fail at this, then I'm unlovable, right? And I'm, again, I'm making something up, but that was that core belief, if then statements. And then the last thing we talked about was that titrating when you're in your head that you're going into more physical responses. And when you're in your body, you're moving more into um, that intel intellect, right? Or the thinking responses. So questions, concerns, thoughts? I'm excited. Um, I was wondering maybe, because um, I didn't, I didn't want to type. So maybe if you could just send me the last bit that you just said, just in point form, that would be awesome. Just so I can reference it when I'm trying sure. to practice it. Sure. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Um, we can we can absolutely get that to you. And then um, however you want to start for next week, usually what I'd like to do is check in like, hey, how was last week for you? Did anything come up about the session? Um, and then, you know, OK, what's on your agenda to talk about today? And then we'll just jump right in. Um, I, I think if the flow feels good to you. So when you think about this a little bit, you know, we kind of meandered in and out of some different topics, but we we connected them all through that anxiety. 
Um, if you mm -hmm. want to stick to one topic, then that's super helpful for me to know. And then I can keep kind of bringing it back to, okay, hey, we, we're talking about this one thing right now. So there's a bunch of different approaches. See what you think and how it feels for you. And then um, we can readdress that. Okay, awesome. I definitely like, like I will jump around a bit because when I'm, I'll just like think of another scenario or situation that's happened and how it's connected in some way. But like, I love that you kind of referred back to something that we hadn't finished too okay so i, I liked i liked both i i liked the way the session went a lot thank you oh good you're welcome any last thoughts or or feelings that you wanted to share no i don't, I don't think so i think i'm good cool all right well let me know how it goes you know how to reach me in between sessions and um and then keep your notes keep writing your notes it's great work you're doing great job and um skills skills work is hard right just what i always try and tell myself is if it were that easy everybody would be doing it and i would be doing it really well and i teach this stuff for a living right so just remind yourself these are easy concepts to understand right but they are in no way easy to implement it, it actually is quite difficult and so find some grace for yourself and okay. you know if you if you forget you forget no big deal try again tomorrow is a new day so really focusing that anxiety and keeping it to trying to stay present and when you find that you're future tripping and you're starting to worry come back to that present okay what do i need to do right now yeah okay okay yeah yeah um, lately I've been, <laughs> sometimes I'll worry about something and then I'll get sidetracked with something else. And then I say, oh, I have to go back to the worrying. Like, what was I even worrying about? And I'm like, no, no, you're literally not going back there. And, and I don't, I'm like, no, I'm good. Not away. Perfect. So, Excellent. Yeah.